All right, welcome back here to Calling the Audible. It is uh, Division A and B. Let's dive into it that week that was with Simon, P's, Salut. Eagle, and GM. Salut. Division A action. White. That occurred. Uh, four games. The White. game that caught my attention, John, Con was... Well, the cons won, 46-45, okay. which you were there for, and I was the owner. Like the Jerry Jones oh, wow. at sidelines class. Mo Khan was the worst cheerleader of all times. Jerry Jones like the best. No, remember how Dan Lazar was the cheerleader of his team last season in Division 2? It was even worse with Mo Khan. He was cheering for guys who literally couldn't care less about Mo Khan. There's no such person. No Dan, such person exists in the Danny world. Danny Damore doesn't care about Mo Khan. Danny Damore has a poster of Mo Khan. Really? Yeah, in the bathroom. Well, weird place, though. Danny, if you listen, because it's not show, like a sexual thing. It's more like encouragement. Like, Danny, you can't get it going. You, you can't relieve the bowels. <laughs> Let's go. Mokan believes in you. Do you still have some of those? Mokan, Mokan. Posters of you signed. Of when? Posters of you signed. Because if other people want ba- p- pictures of you in yeah. their bathroom, can uh, they come ask you for them? Ask Terry Tammy if he has a few. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Let's circle back. So also, can we get these posters? But when you say, no do you still about. have? No other than the one he gave Danny. What do you think, Danny? Exactly. No, but this means it. he had some at some point. Yes. No, I didn't. I don't know what he's but talking he about. gave Danny the more. Yeah, it's him posing in like like yeah. Under Armour holding a football. And oh, I remember those. Oh, yes. I want that. Those are sexual. I want those ones. That's what the Dawson Project did for my friend's photo shoot. Yeah. Back in 2000. That Mokan looked hot, though. We'll find so much Photoshop on the ads. I will print it <laughs> and you will sign I, it. I think we need to give Eagle four minutes and he'll have it up on the screen. Yeah, that was a, my buddy uh, Vaughn who had a Photoshop uh, program can, with Dawson. Can you, uh, ins- every time Mo's speaking, instead of it going, to, pic- to, going to get like, the camera shot of Mo, go to the picture of yes. Mo God. Is that even a question? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so to come back to this game, yeah. to get back into Division A, con artists, they played really well. Uh, I'll give the credit where credit is due. Outsiders. Dan Lazara, two wins on Kevin Wyeth in the last few seasons. Okay, so Dan Lazara played well. The whole, for 98% of the game, he took the dumbest of OCs. Turning point. Because he's such a kid. Like Turning point. couldn't, so I'll explain the situation and they'll understand exactly what I mean. Italian. They, no, so they scored a third touchdown in the game. James Ohayan, they're so they're going for an Ohayan, actually. Sorry, James. Steps out, comes Don't back, the first comes, name. comes back in. <laughs> <laughs> Steps out, come back in. The referee's on the back line. He sees him step on the line and come back in. So he calls him illegal touching, and the cover is no good. It, like it's part of the game, right? So, so Morgan Dan Freeman got caught with illegal touching this week as well. Interesting. Yeah. Did so you actually Dan see the clip? It's really stupid. <laughs> so, so Dan got upset, which is fair. You should be upset at your receiver for being like you. You should know he was he was wide open. I think with the coverage. Following drive, as the outsiders score, they go for the convert. The guy is clearly in. Dan, as he steps on the field, turns to the referee and he says, "Oh, he wasn't. He wasn't outside on this one." Yeah, you got an OC. I've, I've said Netflix. that before. I've got an OC for so that. I've gotten that exact OC before. So Paul Lapierre stepped in at quarterback with five plays, went four and nine yards, and scored. So if Paul Lapierre, instead of a number, can he just have? The number OC on his back, because like that's the reason he's on the team. Is, is <laughs> he? Uh, it's on screen. He yeah. steps. He, he's there to step <laughs> in for Dan Lazara. Was, uh, no, the other picture, the football jersey was oh, with good. FPF. Yeah, the football jersey of the one with you lifting. No, we need under our Rob. Straight under our Rob. That was Rob's idea. Why is it so white? <laughs> that was the thing. That was the whole idea. Is, it, is it on the screen, uh, Eagle? It will be. Oh, well, well I wanted to preview it with you guys we first. We've talking about it for a minute. I was trying to figure out which one to get. Okay. So anyways. Uh, what's my timer, by the way? Anyways. You're five minutes in. Four. Regardless, counter artists played mm-hmm. really well. They they held their own. They stopped the two-point convert at the end. They still have four plays. I believe they would have scored anyways and won the game. Uh, counter artists' offense looks unstoppable. I'm curious to see how their defense holds up the rest of the way, but they've been playing well. The right. real game of the week this week was Spitfire beating Which I was One there Stars for. 45 Now, I, like, that's the real... It was a great win for Spitfire, and this has become too evident for Monstars. Slow start of the gate. Okay. Um, Ryan Reedy... Uh, sorry, Jadri, I beg your pardon. Uh, an unintentional elbow to the forehead, gash on his eyebrow, couldn't play it. Who was playing? Jad? Jad on defense, extra point. So he's out. 
uh, Jordan McLaren comes late to the game. So it's not in rhythm, you know, and, and they just didn't feel like they were going to the flow of things. They fell behind early in the game by two scores. He came back, and it was score for score. And they played it well, Monsters, right? They got down to five plays. They got down to three plays, final score. But Karm Pelice, once again, the veteran. And for some odd reason, maybe because they haven't played Karm, they don't know his offense as well. But they went to, and Jam would know Karm's offense very well. He went to his classic signature rollout roll wheel. Rollout one way. Uh, and the wheel the opposite pot, direction. Uh, yeah, the post cross body. Yeah, exactly. And that killed Monstars on third and fourth downs. And I give Spitfire full credit because they came and they played and they were balls out on both sides of the football. Balls out is the best kind of out. Absolutely. But so my question is, is like the thing, the thing you're, the thing you're, uh, you're taught in, in every level of football yeah, and especially – and then NFPF and FPF junior coach coaches always tell the kids, re- read the routes, not the quarterback. Yeah. So if you just follow along with the quarterback that's rolling out, expect to be torn up. And this is in the highest level of FPF. So I'm surprised to see I Monsters. I, st- I still feel like Monsters, they, they don't care about the regular season. They played their week one game. They yeah. ah, we're going to make the playoffs. But they were, were frustrated though yesterday. They were frustrated with non-calls, uh, calls not going their way. Yeah, uh, but I, I get it. But it just feels like they, they care only in the second half. But it's also monsters football to just Simo's score, just making up narratives, score as much as you can, and it's going to come down to who has the, la- the ball in the last five plays. So, Mike Roy got a had a bit of a run in this game. Yeah, right? yeah, he, as has uh, been posted all over the FPL. Yeah, unfortunately, a gash on his chin, mm-hmm. and so who knows? I believe he's. I don't know if he's out for the week, but if he is, I would sh- it would surprise me. It was a deep gash, a puddle of blood. He uh, went. He went for stitches afterward. You had to go for stitches. Yeah. That's how bad the yeah. cash was. Like it's yeah. not just the oh, I got paper cut. Right. That That's why cut. we have staplers. So. Yeah. Uh, wow. Division. Uh, next time you have B. a cash, I'll do it with a stapler, and you'll never say that again. <laughs> Division B. Men of Mayhem lose by twenty to two HD without Terry Tam, James Nowakowski, and I forget the third player who did not play for Men of Mayhem. Do you take anything from this loss? Chris Miard. Chris and, Miard. Uh, Akeem were he, also late. Yeah, they came late because uh, Akeem. Hoy Charles thought that he was in Brossard. So Chris was following Akeem towards Brossard instead of Lachine coming from downtown. So, so this is why, Chris, you should have better friends. Also, like, imagine, we had, imagine we had a site where all the games were posted well in advance. <laughs> but it's yeah, you know. It's such a key with, with the address, <laughs> too, right? You can use GPS, the, the address. Right. But, but, do you take but, anything but are the there any though? Burger Kings on the way to Brossard? That's Ooh, probably that's why. I mean, he is in that commercial. Official spokesman for uh, Burger Kings. He made a great face. Although he does prefer Chicken McNuggets. Traitor! Wow. Traitor, Akeem Hoy Charles. But do you take anything from this loss, though? No. With their Not really, no. No? I, I would love to say yes and give credit to two and a half times. I'm listening. But so, like, is... That's <laughs> why you <laughs> have to do it. He's not going to do yeah, that. So that's what I would love to mean, is that I won't. Nope. I would love to, like, for example, you tell your girl, I'd love to marry you. You don't follow it up with, but I won't. <laughs> um, so the thing is, <laughs> to is that what you did with your, with your fiance? No, no. I, I, was, forced, I, I was forced you. to then buy a ring. No, that's what Mo did. And that's what he's single now. <laughs> um, the thing, I would love to marry you, but you know. The thing is, honestly, our um, look, th- where I will give credit to and have Dan's is if we play this game 10 times, it's a probably a 5-5 five and five record for each team. Yeah, but Joey, Joey so it could have gone either way. No, I would give all the way the hedge. The hedge? Yes. Between the hedges. The hug. <laughs> give him the hug. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, but I like one yeah, one yeah. of them one of them is going to be a Hall of Famer first, and it's going to be Joey Taylor. So. We'll find out I today who number eight is in the quarterback. Well, we'll, 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 maybe. No, we'll find out today who's number eight. Number eight. But uh, eight. okay, so speaking of numbers, no, 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 you can't do the top ten yet. We're not doing number uh, eight. Of course not. I'm no. just speaking of numbers. Yes, go ahead. Dad bots. Ch- Sean Abrams playing with a chip on his shoulder. Ever since I said it, he sucked, he's been very good. For some one reason, he's like Blake Bortles, though. One week. Two weeks. Yeah, well, two For some reason, sample, his stats yeah. are doubled. And he's had two weeks 30 sample. touchdowns so far. So, I don't understand. Every time we touchdowns. post the stats, they're doubled. That's yeah. a glitch in the system. I think I just figured <laughs> it out. That's the only way he's going to eat the Hall of Fame. <laughs> like, literally, right now, I think I figured out why. It's a glitch in the system. Now. Took you three weeks. Three weeks. Please eat your sprinkled donut first before. You're like, yeah, I eat donuts. I'm well, yeah, like, really like Eagle, you're, you're not on camera, so I understand you can eat during the shows, but you should also <laughs> not speak with your <laughs> full of donuts. With sprinkles on your lips and mustache as well. So, speaking of, so moving on to the script. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looking ahead here. Uh, <laughs> you're saying your point about I'm the quarterback. giving you a. <laughs> you're talking about Sean Abram, this and this, yeah, right? Yeah, so. the dad bots have been playing really well. Don't fire it. Sean, Sean Abrams been playing. So are you, are you ta- are you taking them as with the two one teams in Division B? You have them two HD Victor Royale Meta Mayhem all two and one. Do you think that's the best team right now amongst the two and ones 
in Division No, B. no. Two, uh, two and a half Dan's and Men are still better. Men is a dominant team. But I'm surprised. Bad bods, I'm surprised, man. I'm, I'm happy for them. I also think you're overreacting to that, um, to this past week's Victory Royale's loss. What do you mean, overreacting? Like, because he, he asked about a group of teams including Victory Royale, mm-hmm. and he's like, no, they're not in those teams. But like to me, Victory Royale has absolutely the opportunity to be in that top group of teams. They, they just had a bad game. So, so I was waiting for th- that topic to come up, but we'll use it I now. I thought that was the topic. Well, like, Mo just asked the question. It's we'll, we'll literally the same words. Okay, from we'll script. use it now. I'm off the bandwagon for Victory Royale. I like the roster. They've not been playing well. So based on one loss. Yes, no, based okay. on two losses. Two well, lo- one, but two games, one loss. Uh, that game where they played against spring cleaning, they should have been more dominant than they were last week. Spring cleaning. Are you didn't win enough. No, but they're not playing well, and they squeezed by. Okay, but like, week, so, no. point. And th- and so week, in the regular season, that doesn't matter. Okay, and this week, they got spanked. And Phil Cutler, as much as I like the guy, has not been playing well this season. He's... Last season, we gave it l- last spring. We gave him a lot of praises, saying because in the fall we hammered him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so crushed him. But this season, there's something off with Phil Cutler, and he's throwing dumb interceptions. What? Yeah. But so, like the thing with Phil Cutler is he's always turned the ball over. Yes, and but not in this. And, and but not in this fashion. He throws the ball over because he now. takes shots deep, and it's like 50-50 balls. But now he's just throwing so at DBs. At these teams, what team could go off the rails for further progress? Victor, what do you pick? Uh, piece. Two and one, you got Victor Royale, two HD, Dad Boss, and Meta Mayhem. Um, to be honest, this is this is a good group of teams. Um, I I I'm I'm the uh, I'm on the opposite side of it. I I I think Victor Royale is gonna right the ship. I think Dad Bods, if anyone, I know I know um, all jokes about the double stats aside. <laughs> Sean Abram has been amazing, and Dad Bods have been amazing. But we've seen, like we saw in the winter, that it won't it won't they last. don't. That it's not. A perfect roster. There's a reason he's number ten. That's true. It won't last. That's true. You didn't ask me about my uh, two receivers in Division C, by the way. I know. Well, so next week, two no, receivers we three for the price of one. Yeah. No, it's How about done. That the, the topic. Is no, done. that's fine. I hate doing lists. So it's it's done for me. It didn't work. Nobody cared. It's done. GM, who do you have uh, from these teams here that could fall off the rails? Two HD. No. Really? really? Well, explain. Yes. Go, go ahead. I, I just Hall of Fame quarterback. Th- okay, cool. You can repeat that narrative as much as you want. Going to. Because I have the stats to back it up. Just so looking at their upcoming schedule as well, I'm bringing it up right now because it's taking me a little while. They're playing underachievers. Okay. Drop the mic, which is a high octane offense. Well, screen cleaning, the they're going to beat. To then they're playing dad bots as well. So aside from the screen cleaning game, like they have a lot of very testing games coming they up. Dad bots so. twice. But so like in yeah, in uh, the, uh, the that's their their, their mm-hmm. schedule. Second. Yeah, second so but like in Division B, how many games are not testing games? Other than when you're playing spring cleaning. Like pew, 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 the pew, games pew, 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 pew. are all tough. One and two, maybe. Sorry, I, say one, I would say one, one and two, and two t- uh, one games two. are testing for a division B. I mean, but like players. almost like to me, this is a well, this is a well structured division, and that every team, every, all the teams are good. Every team's good, and there's no previews, like you said. I think every game is a tough one. The same way it felt last season, Division B, where a lot, a lot of teams. There was one team that was Brocasian that struggled last season. Also, look to your left at the screen. Oh, it just came nice. down the photo of Mo. No, it's there. Oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah, just uh, I, I it's still there forever. I think Div B is is a tough division to be in. I don't think any team's gonna go to zero. Well, it's not possible anymore because there's no three zero team. But it's it's just the way it is. The way t- uh, Terry Tam said it a few well, weeks ago. Well, are three zero right now. R- oh, then I don't think they're gonna go to zero. There goes this whole uh, argument. Please, yeah. next. Uh, I, I the way Terry Tam said it, I think a lot of th- we're gonna see a lot of seven three teams. Braves start. Yeah. You look at the Braves right now. They're off to a three zero start. Uh, two of the wins have come against the freshmen. Okay, that's an easy Whatever. win. And an O twelve team, Ocean's twelve team without Ryan Castro. So where do we yeah, see? But the quarterback was still good. Oh, well, Hollowick looked terrible yesterday. By the he way, he looked terrible, he but he's still awful. a good quarterback. Yeah, but not for Division A. But the, it's fine. But where do you where do you see this Braves team in the whole? Is it also his first g- game at quarterback in Division A I slash one? So yes. yeah. So it's also, that's forgivable. It's also the first game that. J.D. Chavetti played for Braves, and they had Sebastian Cruzzi, and they had their full yeah, two roster. Two pick sixes. But what do you see this Braves team right now? Are they the legitimate best team, or do you still think the outsiders are calling they're artists the better they're teams? They're so we're, gonna, we're always going to give Kevin Wyeth. Like, Kevin Wyeth has got, like, that, the, like, the LeBron cred. Like, yeah, he's got, like, like, the permanent benefit of the doubt. Yeah, like, exactly. So, like, he'll always make the finals. Just pencil it in, done, next. Uh, l- now we'll discuss the other team. So Braves <laughs> Braves probably the most complete team. I think top to bottom, offensive and defensive. But the problem with Braves is they never have the same guys every week. If they would well, have they their had seven Jared Taylor best, for them yesterday. 
Yeah, he's on the team. Yeah, he he's not. He's not a sub. He was no, part he, of the team. He's he just he missed a bunch of games. Yeah. If they would have their full roster every week, Jerry Taylor, J.D. Chevalier, Matt Lepage, P- uh, Mike Piercing, Jonathan Maher, Sebastian Fizzi, yeah. that team is could win Division A. Yes, I would have them. The favorites. problem is if they show up in the, fi- in Look, the playoffs, they, they need to be. F- they need to make five games. Yeah, but they. Were you about to say they need to be five players? They need to be five. Oh, yeah, also they, that they, they have one with five guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, but they, there's been three the games. Yes, JD Chevalier has one. Okay, Matt Lepage has two or three. I don't know because they're sixty-seven so percent. Not bad. No, but I'm saying that there's a chance that they're they're going to have a lower record just because of roster inconsistencies. I mean, but I don't think the record's going to like. I don't think the record means anything about the Braves. But when you show up to the playoffs, like they, they've likely already won enough games to make the playoffs. Now we we know this as a six seed, essentially. Yeah, th- so th- this is the FPF debacle, where let's say their game is on a Wednesday and they can't play Wednesday. What happens then? They miss after the roster and yeah, they don't but make the playoffs just but you're because. Are talking about for the playoff purposes? You're talking about regular season? No, playoff purposes. Let's say that the so week eight, ten, yeah. everyone's got no, four week, games. Week eleven, or that game. Week 11. Yeah, yeah the first week, week of playoffs. God, that I week, so that game is on a Sunday. And that team never played Sundays and can't play Sundays. I don't think Div A has like a quarterfinal. Jesus, I hate him so much. Yeah, Moving on. No, but I'm saying no, I'm, I don't think they have Wednesday games because the schedule doesn't require them to have games. Well, how do we look at the schedule to see what days the Div A playoffs are had? Then we can answer the question. I'm just right. saying there's a chance that because of their roster inconsistencies, they might not have their best roster for the playoffs. <laughs> and then we have Con Artists as the third team you mentioned, right, Mo? That's correct. Uh, so, again, being that they have number OC on the team, Paul Appear. Who's there to step in every time Dan Lazare gets kicked out of a game slash suspended? The fact that you have two division I one quarterbacks that. on yeah. the same team kind of helps. And they both, like, like Paul has what, like eight or nine passing touchdowns in the season so far? Can you He's done well, Paul, up can, here. Can you look it up, please? Yeah, Paul you have here. it right open in your face. I mean, we have producers. Yeah, but they're oh. both looking at their phones <laughs> doing something else. Paul, <laughs> not, not you actually have, have it physically open in front of you. I don't, click I, don't ha- I, don't t- I don't have the team page open. And my phone's loading. He has nine TDs, two INTs. There we go. Okay, so Dan has how many TDs? Uh, Dan Lazare eleven and year. zero. Yeah, that's and 11. Paul has nine. Yeah, that's that's twenty. I mean, that. I mean, I will say though, he took a sack, so not very efficient. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> um, it will, I will say the way Dan Lazare's game has evolved as he moved up, like we see him going, like now he's so far this season eight point nine yards per pass. I've noticed he does take with the defense gives him a lot more than. Early in his FPF career, he l- he just loved to chuck it and oh. and now and really air it out. Like he, he now really just takes what's there, and he's safe and he's smart with the ball. His play calling is good. Yeah. the The only flaw is he tends to oh you better not say yell at people. Dan, you better not see, well, you better not say because Dan's gonna hold that against you when he sees you <laughs> every week. He, like like that's the thing is like we've spent the last like I don't know a minute and forty five seconds praising him. He's gonna hold on to the one negative yeah, thing yeah, he will say about it. He'll send me text Friday. Me, uh, Simo, oh, what's he saying uh, about I'm not a good quarterback? No, there's this one play that he should have been a pick by uh, Caleb Fresnel, but was not. Is he always saying he doesn't throw a catchable ball? No, no. When he <laughs> <laughs> is that one? No, Cam didn't play well. When he when he calls a drag to Zach uh, to, to Zach Junior, he tends to expect it to be open too much, mm-hmm. and he, he threw it knowing that Zach would be open and it would work. And Caleb was right there and didn't make a play on the ball. I think Caleb's a new division. He's a new player to FPF. He was an FPF junior player. He was brought in because he knows Tony Lala and uh, he knows Kevin White. He's a good player. He's just not used to Division One. That should have been a pick. It was not. Saved the game. Mm-hmm. But you can't make that mistake every week. All right, Alex Holowak. The rumor is that he's supposed to join the freshman the team. In Who's your rumor. source? It's not a rumor. It's uh, the r- the source is me and Rob Campana. It's not a rumor. It's, it's so, a so not Alex okay, Holowak is so not the source. So not much, facts. Again, much, one no, text. No, it takes you no, time. He's joining the team. Can you can week. you can you text Holowak, please, Eagle? He's joining the team on week four. Can we get actual so facts? How, how much it's not complicated. How, it is. <laughs> week how four. Apparently. All right, guys. How how much does he improve this team, though? How much can he ma- can it possibly get worse? Did they win more than two games? No. Maybe. Did they win one game? Yes. Yes. Don't win a game. Did they play spring cleaning? <laughs> 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 no, they win a the game. Uh, you can't you can put a number on it because you, you go from no quarterbacks to a quarterback. Uh they, they they wanted to have a quarterback. To, they wanted to try one last time, one last shot at it this week without and him. And Norgard killed him. Yeah, I, yeah, mean, I mean, 31 points scored all season. They don't have a quarterback. The, the guys are just, they, they go at it, they throw 10, 15 passes, like, I'm done with this. And another guy comes in and is like, oh, I'm done with this. It's it's bad. It, they don't have a quarterback. They're not it, bad. They're it's not bad. Add it to the counter. They're not bad players. It's a bad players. 
That's four. <laughs> but it's they they need someone to to help them first of all tell them what to run. Like they don't know what routes are working. So what do you they describe the environment then? It's it's positive. They're having fun and they're not they're they're chill. It's just at the end of the day. How do you describe the quarterback play? Oh, horrendous. <laughs> what were the offensive? <laughs> <laughs> what were the offensive outputs? <laughs> terrible. Um, What's a, another word for terrible? <laughs> horrendous. <laughs> Trash. But okay, there's, there's, what does Halloween do now? Theoretically awesome because it I fills you with uh, no, I think what awful. I, the, what I like about Alex fills you with for this team is Alex doesn't need that number one superstar to be successful with his teams. He's able to spread the ball well and has a concept that works against most defenses. I mean, doesn't he just score 40 points all the time? No yeah, matter what? Yeah, so pretty much. But so that's the thing is with these receivers don't who are good players but don't know FBF, you might be able to teach them how to what patterns to run that works mm-hmm. and make it happen. He's probably going to be able to score 20, 25 points against any defenses just because. So he's starting week five according to your week fake uh, information? This you said five a second ago? I said week four. Well, so it sucks that they're playing Spitfire the first game because had they played them later, that might have been like a yes, better chance for them. But and then they go on Who's to play it? con yeah. artists, yeah, but they monsters, are they outsiders. Spitfires twice? No. They go after this they go con artists, monsters, outsiders, braves, yeah, they're Oceans not twelve. Win. Not gonna win. Hashtag NR. Not gonna win. So to confirm, and I tried to get Hollowack to join us live, but he is uh, disposed right now where he can't join. However, he is saying that Dude, just call us from the can, it's fine. That, that's literally exactly what he said. He's like, unless you guys want to hear me on the bull. Yeah, that's no, what I'm like, I just fast. I don't it's got good acoustics. Uh, uh, he bulls. said we're working out the details and that there's talks oh. on Money, going. baby. Details? Well, what details Contract are there? Contract details. Cash, cash, wap, wap. All right, then. Um, we're running low on time here, so we must get to the next topic. The ever-popular segment. Simon Dagenet, mm-hmm. top 10 quarterbacks. We are now to... Who was last week? I missed last week. Uh, Pat Chanel. Pat Chanel. All right, so that's fine. I mean, we should have like a rundown on the screen, but our producer is not very good at producing. So we are and now no one asked for graphics, so... I blame Duke. He doesn't produce. It's just Literally, nobody asked for graphics. It's just a list. Can you produce something? Thank you. No. So we're at number eight of the okay. Simon Dagenet top 10 quarterbacks. So who Come is on. number eight that is better than Shawnee? And the number eight quarterback <laughs> is who this week? Phil Cutler. Hey, Phil Cutler. All right. After the last few weeks, it has to be Phil Cutler. He hasn't been playing well, and it's it is he's not where he was. So last is it season. like top ten of the season or top ten? No, no, overall as an overall quarterback. So based, uh, so take his entire career and based on the last three weeks. No, based on you're not like playing well. Entire career, considering who's left on the board, I put Phil Cutler as number eight. The only hiccup to this list is at some point I'm going to have to name the prospect quarterback who hasn't played yet. So that could be funny. Okay. All right. So Phil Cutler, your number eight quarterback. Well, you can list the guy who's not currently playing quarterback who's on the roster. You think? No, there's a guy on the roster that is a quarterback, hasn't played yet. So I could list him, but I'm waiting to see how good he is. So worst case, he's going to be very bad. And then we'll be like, yeah, he's number three. Right, Phil Cutler right now, number nine in passing with 280 yards. Sean Avram, number three with 683. So yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, pretty good. It's okay. a, it makes sense. Okay. Those makes a lot of Sean sense. Avram's number 10. Number 10 and there's nine quarterbacks. So, by the way, so far, Joey Taylor's three slots ahead at least. Perhaps, according to the wild card yes. uh, draft at least. lottery. At least, yes. At least. So, I mean, I mean, the Hall of Fame debate settles itself. Absolutely. There's no debate. <laughs> It is now time for the week of the games brought to you by GM. Brought to you by GM indeed. So the first one is... Brought to you by uh, Mokan Spandex. Hashtag NR <laughs> against Monstars. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one. Um, Free my article. I'm going to go Monstars. I will we have Monsters. you here if your answer is always going to be read my article? Look at Pete and DB. <laughs> what are you going to be shipping at? I'm just a more likable uh, person. You actually are both in my line of sight right now. So yeah. But it's, it's meant to you, though. I'm, I'm uh, a more likable person. We got... No. I, I'm going monsters. Next, give me the hashtag. What you just said? Read your article. I'm not. Yeah, I'm now not reading your article. <laughs> you, what, no, you lost the click. Two I, less no, clicks. Next, what I do is I write a different uh, thing in my article. Braves con artist. You know I'm taking cons. I'm gonna go Braves on this one. Did you just? What did you do? Scratch my nose. Okay. Oh, so I was like. I thought. I no. I thought he like uh, you know that old move where you lick your fingers and you. Just put oh, the eyebrows. eyebrows? <laughs> no, no, it's only this. What kind of still will not sleep with you? Although with the spandex, I mean. We yeah, got. <laughs> He's asking you, please. I said it already. Briefs. Yeah, well, I said look at Simo. Read my article. Also, I'll right. pick con artists here. We'll see my article. The Next. game's <laughs> on a Wednesday if it matters for your roster bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I choose roster bullshit. Uh, we have 
Underachievers against 2HD. Give me the Dan. No, no. Underachievers, don't give me the UA. Give me the Vals Finest. Give me uh, two and a half Dan's. And we have Drop the Mic against Victory Royale. VR. Drop the Mic's been playing terrible football. Yeah. I, I want to pick Drop the Mic so bad just because I know that if we keep picking against them, we'll eventually be wrong because they're n- not a bad team at all. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to have to go with Victory Royale. I'm going to drop this With mic. cheese. All right. Mario Pareko drops 50 on him. Magic words, please. Mokan, do you wear spandex as pajama? No, no. That would not be comfortable. No, it would be very uncomfortable. Please give me the luck right now. I don't know why. <laughs> Good, Good night. night, something. Spandex. Good night, spandex. Good night, so 2007. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I guess, like, I'm always saying good night spandex. That makes me happy. Good night, Is it? Uh, well, it's tied. So, I mean, that could mean anything. Literally anything. It means actually one thing. It means they're tied. It's, it's very simple. Who is losing this game? All right. We'll see. This looks like uh, it's going to be sucked for you. Why? Uh, I don't care about this game. You know, just in general, it sucks for you. No, it does not. I'm a great person. You're supposed to like me for once. Oh, yeah. Uh, Simo <laughs> is a great person, and he's amazing, and he's having my child.